Okay, so we are doing rules of exponents, an introduction to polynomials. So we usually teach this lesson before we get to the polynomials, but sometimes we learn this lesson in like eighth grade too and then stuff, so yeah. <laughs> Welcome to today's lesson. Rules of exponents, an introduction to before we get to the polynomial. So what is an exponent? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Exponents represent repeated multiplication. So if I have three to the fourth power, I have the exponent is four and that base all about that base. I've made this joke <laughs> probably like four times in the last week. It's embarrassing. Anyway, um, basically what that means is three times three times three times three. So the four tells you how many times you multiply the three by itself. Okay? Look at, look at them just, uh, uh. Anyway, the product rule. Uh, so we're going to go over a lot of rules today. Um, bear with me. So if m and n are positive integers and a is a real number, then a times n, a to the m, times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. Whoa, Ms. B, so many letters. I know. <laughs> Numbers, three to the power of four times three to the power of five equals three to the power of nine. Make more sense? I figured, okay? So let's do some examples. So if I have three squared times three to the fourth, I'm gonna get three to the two plus four, which is three to the sixth power. And of course I would evaluate that. Let's say I have just Variables. I know you're like, oh, the letters again. But wait, right? A z to the third, z cubed times z squared times z to the fifth, right? So three plus two plus five. That's really, that's it. So z to the tenth. Um, well, let's say you have all of this going on, right? So what's really you want to happen is the three and the four got to move together because they're coefficients. And then the y squared and the y to the fourth. So now it's easy to see that you got to do two plus four. And that's going to give you y to the sixth. And then the three times the four those are big numbers. Big numbers got their own rules. Exponents, little numbers, they got their own rules, right? So treat them accordingly, all right? So negative 12, y to the sixth. Uh, what if you have a zero exponent? If a does not equal zero, then a to the zero equals one. Anything to the zero power equals one. Five to the zero power equals one. All that stuff to the zero power equals one, okay? Why is this one equal negative one? Oh my gosh, because exponents are selfish numbers. They only affect what they're touching. So that only affects the x. It does not affect the negative, right? So x to the zero power equals one times that negative equals negative one. Why? <laughs> Why? Well, let me show you the pattern so you can see where the rule came from, blah, 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 okay? So two to the fourth power equals 60. <laughs> two to the third power equals eight. Two to the second, everybody knows this one, two squared equals four. And two to the first power, well, it equals Two. So what's the pattern here? How do I get from 16 to eight? How do I get from eight to four? How do I get from four to two? What's happening? What's the pattern? Well, 16, I need you to think about it. From six to eight, you're subtracting eight or you are dividing by two. From eight to four, you're subtracting four or you are dividing by two. Good, so four to two, you're subtracting two or you are dividing by two. So naturally, to get two to the zero power, I would have to take that blue two and divide it by two. Well, what's two divided by two gonna be? One. I know you're like, wait, what if that's just the twos? Why that's not the threes? Well, let me show you because rules only work if they work everywhere. Equals 81, equals 27, equals nine, equals three. So how do I get from 81 to 27? You guessed it, divide by three. How do I get from 27 to nine? You guessed it. Divide by three. How do I get from nine to three? You guessed it. Divide by three. So naturally, to get three from the zero power, I'm gonna take three and I'm gonna divide it by three. And it's gonna give me one. So anything to the zero power doesn't, the number could be a thousand, it could be 1500, it could be 11. The same pattern, I'll divide by 11, divide by 11, divide by 11. When I get down to that last one, it's gonna be it's gonna, zero to the zero power, gonna be one. Anyway, the quotient rule. If a is a non-zero real number and m and n are integers, then a to the m over a to the n equals a to the m minus n. You're like, Haha, you're doing it again with the letters. I got you. Here's some numbers. Three to the third over three to the fifth. That just means three to the three minus five. What is three minus five? Three squared. What's three squared? Nine. That's your final answer, but I ain't write it up there on the board. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> so let's use the quotient rule in some examples. So I have x to the seventh over x to the fourth, right? So I'm gonna do seven minus four. And what's seven minus four? X equals x to the third. Ta-da! Okay, let's do big numbers. I can't subtract 
and I know my students, it's gonna be my students who wanna do this. You're gonna wanna say 20 minus four and give you 16? No, that's, those are big numbers. Big numbers coefficients, they have their own rules. Don't forget about those rules, right? 20 divided by four is five, right? But little numbers, the exponents have new rules. These are the new rules that we're learning and you subtract them when they're on top of each other. So six over five and that's six minus five, right? Which is one. So here we are, okay? All right, so now we're gonna do example number three. There's a lot going on with example number three because you got big numbers, A and blue, then you got A's in purple, and then you have B's in pink, right? So you gotta focus, right? You gotta do the nine over the three, you gotta do the A's, and then you gotta do the B's separately. So what's nine over three gonna be, okay? Oh wait, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, okay? I'm, I'm just gonna leave those there, it's fine, okay? Nine over three is gonna be three. The A's, I have to subtract the exponents. I have an exponent of four on top, and then I have an exponent of one on the bottom. I know you're like, where did you get the one from? It's not there, that's why I know it's a one, okay? So four minus one, and then the B's, I have seven and a two, so seven minus two. So my final answer is gonna be three A cubed B to the fifth, because four minus one is three, and then seven minus two is five. Nine divided by three was three. Again, big numbers have their own rules, little numbers have their own rules. Don't mess it up. Anyway, negative exponent, if a is a real number other than zero and n is a positive integer, then a to the negative n equals one over a to the n. Again, the variables, the letters. Ms. Bernard, why did I put alphabet in math? Because I need variables. Life is full of variables, things that change that you don't know what they mean. Math is life. Anyway, so three to the negative two equals one over three to the positive two. Positive two okay and three squared equals one over nine okay three squared is equal to nine you're like why how you just move something and it becomes positive how does that even work oh you already know i'm here for you okay so we already know why two to the zero anything to the zero power is going to equal one but why do negative exponents turn positive if i move them to the bottom of the fraction i'm so glad you asked so let's continue the pattern right so i'm dividing by two divide by two divide by two so I'm going to take that blue one that's on the screen and I'm going to divide it by two. Well, what's one divided by two? Okay, it's one half, right? One divided by two is 0 0.5 or one half, right? So I'm going to take one half and I'm going to divide it by two. I'm going to get one fourth. Oh, you see how it's matching? I'm going to get one fourth. Ooh, where did I get that fourth? You see how it's matching? I said that already, but I have to say it again. I'm going to divide by two. I'm going to get one eighth. Wait, where's that number coming from? You, you got to making the connections here, right? And then the 16, oh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But Ms. Bernard, you're still not answering the question, like why does the negative exponent turn positive? Well, I'm so glad that you remember that this is what we were talking about, okay? Because one half is one over two to the what power? Two to the first power. So two to the negative one equals one over two to the positive one. Wait, wait, I'm going somewhere, going somewhere, stay with me, okay? One fourth, four is the same thing as what? two squared. So two to the negative two equals one over two to the positive two. Oh, you can finish the pattern for me, right? Eight is the same thing as what? Two to the third. So two to the negative three equals one over two to the positive three. And last but not least, we have two to the 16 was the same thing as two to the positive four. I'm, I know I'm blowing your mind right now. Like this is crazy. You just, oh my God, Woo! you're welcome. <laughs> and I know you're like, but that's just the twos. Oh, baby, you know I got the threes for you, okay? Well, it's the same pattern. It don't even matter, okay? It's just a different number because rules are rules for a reason, okay? For a reason. I'm dividing by three, dividing all those things by three because that's the pattern, right? Three, three, square. Oops. <laughs> I know, I know. You take a, take a minute. I know, I know, I know, I know. Anyway, let's use our negative exponents. So for number one, I have negative four to the negative four power. So I'm gonna do one over negative four to the positive four. Ms. Bernard, you didn't change the sign of the four. It's a big number. We don't change the sign of the big number. We only change the sign of the little number. <sighs> anyway, I should be using proper mathematical terminology. We don't change the sign of the base. We only change the sign of the exponent. Okay, example number, oh, I'm not done yet, because negative four to the fourth power equals 256. So one over 256 is the final answer. And then I have two to, two x to the negative four. Two over x to the fourth. Because why, so the question is, is I get when I do this problem is, why didn't you move the two? Why did you only move the x? Because 
Exponents are selfish numbers. They only affect exactly what they're touching. That negative four, that purple negative four is only touching the X. It's not touching the two. If it was in parentheses and that little four, negative four was on the outside and the two X was on the inside of the parentheses, then everything get affected. But in this case, only the X. So I move it. All right, let's do some simplifying. Yeah, X to the negative nine. Um, over x to the second power. So I'm gonna subtract, I'm gonna get negative nine minus two, so that's gonna give me x to the negative 11. I don't like negative exponents, so I'm gonna change that into a fraction, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make that uh, x to the positive 11 by moving it to the bottom, okay? And then for number, for example, number two, I'm going to, again, treat everything differently. Coefficients get treated differently, exponents get x's, and their exponents get treated differently and then y's and their exponents get differently okay so what's going to happen you already know two over ten simplifies to one fifth i'm going to do the purple exponent so i'm going to do negative seven minus one i'm going to do the pink exponents i'm going to do two minus negative five and i'm going to get negative eight and positive seven but we do not like negative exponents so i'm going to move the x to the negative eight to the bottom and i'm going to leave y to the seventh on the top because it was already positive and the one went away because why do i need the one i don't okay at this point of your math career if we've gotten to this lesson you should know that a coefficient of one is just superfluous information anyway um simplify the expression simplify the expression sorry <laughs> I'm losing my mind. <laughs> anyway, so I have 3x to the negative 3 and then x squared over x to the 6th. So what I'm going to do is because I have two x's on the top, they're, they're the same base. So I can use my my uh, my rule where I add the exponents, right? So I could do negative 3 plus 2, and that's just fine, all right? Um, and then I'm going to get 3x to the negative 1 over x to the 6th. Now, do I like negative exponents? I sure do not. So I'm going to move... Uh, or I could use my quotient rule and do negative 1 minus 6. And I got negative x to the negative 7, but we don't like negative exponents, so I'm going to move it to the bottom. Oh, that was quick. Um, oh, you got some variables in your exponents. Wow, fancy, just so advanced. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to do x uh, to a plus 3. So the, the exponents... I can add them because the bases were the same. Those blue X's were the same, so I could just go ahead and add the exponents. But it's still a variable, so we just that's your final answer, just, just like that, okay? And on the bottom, I could use my quotient rule still, okay? So um, I'm gonna use my quotient rule and I'm gonna subtract those exponents, so the purple minus the pink. And um, I'm gonna get 2T minus T, which is just T. And I'm gonna get one, negative one minus five, and that's gonna give me, minus negative five, excuse me. So minus minus turns into a plus, so that's gonna give me positive four. Yeah, baby, because it's one plus five. Okay, power rules. We're, we're on slide 19 out of 24, so hang in there. We're almost there, people. Um, so the power rules, if A and B are real numbers and M and N are integers, then power rule number one. What does that mean, Miss Bernard? Oh, so glad you asked. If I have just one base exponent and then to the power of an ex another exponent, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply those. I thought you said we were supposed to add those. That's when you got two bases. Okay, we'll talk about the difference. Um, next power rule, if I have one exponent on the outside, I can just go ahead and distribute, I use that in quotes loosely, to everything on the inside. And then power of a quotient, if I have one exponent on the outside, I can just go ahead and quote unquote distribute um, it to the top and to the bottom. Voila. Um, so if I have three fourths, all of that to the second power, that means that's the same thing as three squared over four squared. Let's use these rules. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the three times to three. So I'm gonna get two to the ninth. That's easy, you're like, oh, this next one. What's the answer to the next one? X to the, okay, good. You know what's up x to the eighth very good okay so now this one now i have the three on the outside and i have three things on the inside i have a five i have an x squared and i have a y i'm going to go ahead and distribute that exponent to all three of those things so notice the x squared already had a exponent on it so i'm going to get 125 because five cubed is 125 x squared cubed 
it's x squared times x squared times x squared, so that's x to the sixth. And then y cubed. Whew. We got this. Um, slide 21 out of 24. We're almost there. Um, so let's say I have a, a 4 on the outside. It's a, the exponent. I could give it to everything, the top and the bottom, right? So p squared to the fourth power and then 3r cubed to the fourth power, right? So then what's going to happen is I can distribute the 4 on the bottom to the 3 and to the r cubed. So on top, I'm going to get p to the eighth because 2 times 4 is 8. On the bottom, I'm going to get 3 to the 4th equals 81. And I'm going to get r cubed to the 4th is r12 because I just do 3 times 4 to get me to 12. Look, I'm color coding it, so I'm trying to help y'all follow er everything that's going on. Okay? Um, so still using my rules, right? So I could distribute that negative 2 to each thing inside there. So to the 2, to the x, to the 0, to the y, to the, q, to the negative 3. Um... I'm going to simplify 0 times negative 2 to 0. That's the pink 0. I'm going to simplify negative 3 times negative 2 to the orange 6, positive 6 now. So what I got to deal with is these negative exponents that we got going on, right? So I'm going to move it to the bottom because we learned that that's a rule. If I have a negative exponent, I'm going to go ahead and move it to the bottom, right? And do I really need that coefficient of a 1? Nah. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, okay? So I have y to the 6th over four as my final answer. Okay, and then I have my example number two with a three on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute that three to the top and the bottom. I'm gonna multiply, so I'm gonna get positive 15 and positive six. Now, if we throw back to our quotient rule that we learned, I know that if I have same bases, x and a x, and then I have a 15 and then a six in their, in their exponents, I can use that quotient rule to subtract them. So 15 minus six, so x to the ninth, is actually gonna be my final answer, okay? I know you're like whoo doing you're doing the most it's a it's fine we got two more slides this is actually our last example and then our last slide is just a just a little review okay um so i'm gonna get three to the negative two a cubed b and then three to the negative four a to the seventh b to the negative three wow so much is going on it's fine we got this we're gonna distribute top and then the bottom and then we're gonna distribute in to each thing Ooh, ooh, ooh. right um, and I multiplied, so 3 to the negative 2 times the negative 2 gives me a positive 4. A cubed times that negative 2 is going to give me negative 6. B did not have an exponent, so it's just going to be B to the negative 2. On the bottom, 3 to the negative 4, negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. A to the 7th is 7 times negative 2, so that's negative 14. B to the negative 3 is negative 3 times negative 2, so that's positive 6, okay? So what we going to do now, I'm going to move stuff. I'm going to move negative exponents to the bottom, positive exponents to the top, because we got to make everything positive. So a lot just happened there, right? A to the negative 6 moved to the bottom to become positive. A to the negative 14 moved to the top to become positive. B to the negative 2 moved to the bottom to become positive. Whew! Take a deep breath. We got this. It's the last example. It's just doing the most because it's the last one, okay? So on the bottom, I have my B six and my b2 what can i do with those two exponents and don't say multiply I'm gonna add them because there's two b's a b to the sixth and a b to the second so i add the exponents so six plus two is going to give me eight the a to the 14 and the a to the sixth i have a 14 on top and a six on the bottom what can i do with those exponents subtract 14 minus six what is that going to give me a to the 8th and B to the 8th. Now, what, ha what how that 4, that negative 4 come with that 3? Because, of course, we did 4 minus 8 with the 3s because that 3 is, it counts as a base and it has exponents, so I got 3 to the negative 4. So what are we going to do? We're going to move it to the bottom, obviously, because I still need it to be positive. And final answer, 3 to the 4th power equals 81. Huh. Take a deep breath. You did it. It's fine. that you get it right for a little review. Everything that you learned, you just did all of that.